Hey guys, so in this video, I'm gonna be going over how to drop ship on Amazon step-by-step. -step. So without further ado, roll the intro. What's up guys, my name is Noah, and in this video, I'm gonna be going over how to drop ship on Amazon step-by-step. Now, like I said in my last video, I've been dropshipping on Amazon for a little bit over a year and a half, and last year was my full first year of dropshipping on Amazon, where I did a little bit under $200,000 in sales. Whenever I make a video talking about Amazon dropshipping or how to actually dropship on the platform, I get a lot of questions from people asking how to do it, or a lot of people actually commenting that you can't actually dropship on Amazon. So if you look at their terms of service, Amazon does allow dropshipping. What they do not like is called retail dropshipping or dropshipping from other retailers like Home Depot, Walmart, or any of those other companies. But what they do allow is you can dropship from wholesale suppliers. So in this video, I'm going to show you how I actually operate my business and how I actually dropship on Amazon myself. I'm gonna show you how to find suppliers. I'm going to also show you how to find profitable items. And I wanna walk you through the entire process of how you can actually build your own dropshipping business on Amazon. Before we begin the video, I just wanna ask if you can quickly like the video, also subscribe if you're new. I'm going to be making a lot more videos in the future, going over how to drop ship on different sites and how to build your business. Also, let me know down in the comments if you'd like to see a specific video. So without wasting any more of your time, let's jump right into my computer so I can show you how to drop ship on Amazon. Now, like I said in the intro, my business model is mainly wholesale drop shipping on Amazon. A lot of people use Alibaba, they use this for either private label or they use this for other business models on Amazon. A lot of other people know about AliExpress. This is a very popular site that a lot of people find suppliers for whenever they're drop shipping either on Shopify, a couple of people either drop ship on eBay. So these are two really popular sites, but the only difference is, is that all of the suppliers that you're going to find on these websites are suppliers that are mainly located in China. So for my business, I only use US wholesale suppliers in order to sell on Amazon. This way I can offer faster shipping times and I can also communicate with the suppliers just in case there is a problem. So that's what I'm going to show you in this video. Now you might be asking what is wholesale drop shipping and how can you start working with US wholesalers? So just to give you a quick overview of what's going to be covered, I'm going to show you how to create an Amazon account. I'm going to show you how to get a resale certificate. I'm also going to show you how to find suppliers. I'm going to show you how to create a wholesale account. I'm going to show you how to find profitable items. And I'm also going to show you how to order for drop shipping. And I'm also going to go over all of the miscellaneous details that you need to know when drop shipping on Amazon. The first thing that you're going to need when starting to sell on Amazon is you're going to need an Amazon seller account, obviously. Now the way that you're going to get it if you don't currently have one is that you want to go to Google and you want to type in sell on Amazon and you want to click the link that says become an Amazon seller and it's going to bring you up to this page. Now on this page, what you want to do is you want to register in order to sell on Amazon. Now just to quickly note, it is going to cost you $39.99 a month in order to sell on Amazon. They do have a free plan, but the free plan comes with a lot of limitations and if you actually want to scale this business and if you actually want to sell on Amazon professionally, I highly, highly recommend that you get the paid plan in order to start selling on the platform. Now, I'm not going to walk you through the entire process of setting up an account in this video. It is a relatively long process, as well as they do ask you also for a couple of information, like your bank information, perhaps your driver's license. So you are going to need some of that handy. However, I'm gonna go over all of the steps, and there are a lot of other tutorials on YouTube that do show you how to actually set up an Amazon account. So when you're first creating your Amazon account, it's going to ask you to log in, or you might have to create a new Amazon account. Other than that, you're going to have to fill in your business information. So this is going to be your business legal name. Now for this step, all you can just basically select is you that you are going to be an individual. So none, I am an individual. If you are a business or a corporation, then you might need to select something different. After that, you are going to click agree and continue. Well, first you have to put in your name. After that, you are going to click agree and continue. The next step is that you are just going to fill in the information about yourself where you are located, your residency, as well as you're also going to fill in your phone number. Then they're going to send you a message and you're just going to type in the code and then you're going to click next. After you fill in this step, the next step is going to be the billing. Amazon is just going to ask you to confirm your bank account. It's also going to ask you for a credit card. This is so that they can bill you the $39.99 a month if you are on the professional plan. After that, they're just going to verify and you're also going to create a store name for your actual store on Amazon. And that's basically, or those are all the steps for creating an Amazon account. So now comes one of the most important steps when it comes to wholesale dropshipping on Amazon. 
In order to start working with US wholesalers, you're going to need what's called a resale certificate. Now, if you wanna skip this portion of this video, I do have another video on my channel that goes all in depth on how to actually do this. But just to show you, this is my resale certificate for my business. Basically, what this allows me to do is it allows me to start working with wholesalers and buy items without paying tax on it. And then I have to sell those items. And when I'm selling it to the end consumer, then I collect the tax and I give that tax to my state. So this is not a really hard process. Basically, it took me about 20 minutes to sign up for it. And in some states, it's free. In some states, it might cost you a little bit of money, but it is going to differ on every single state. So what you wanna do is there is a really helpful guide and you can actually go, I'm gonna put this in the description. This is the link to TaxJar. And TaxJar is a, basically it's a tax automation software. And what you can do is you can go ahead and you can look up your state and they have the list of every single state how to get it in every single state. What you wanna do is you just wanna go ahead and find your state and then they'll walk you through how to actually do it. The two last things that you need to know about the resale certificate and when it comes to taxes on Amazon is that in order to get a resale certificate, you are going to need an EIN. So in order to get an EIN, you just go to irs.gov and then you basically click the form where it says get an EIN right here, apply for an employer ID number. Now this is completely free. You're just going to fill out your information and once you apply, you should get it in your email. After that, you are basically going to then apply for a resale certificate. And once you attain that, you are then going to start working with wholesalers. And that's basically where the whole process begins of finding suppliers, getting their items up, and then you start running your business on Amazon. The last thing to note is that when you are selling on Amazon, you are technically responsible for collecting the sales tax and you are technically responsible for reporting that to your state. However, Amazon recently started collecting sales tax in a bunch of different states. So any order that goes to that state, technically you don't actually need to remit that or you don't need to give it to your state anymore because Amazon handles it. What you only need to know is that currently as of the filming of this video, these are the states, the states in orange, these are the states that Amazon now collects and remits the sales tax for you. And the states in gray are the states that Amazon does not currently actually collect for. I'm also obligated to say that I'm not a tax professional. All of what I gave you is just my experience and it's only for entertainment. This is not advice. And I do recommend that you contact or you actually work with a professional who is a tax certified professional. So once you have your seller central account and you have your resale certificate, the next step is that you want to go ahead and find suppliers, contact them, get their items up on Amazon and start making some sales. So when it comes to finding suppliers, there are two types of suppliers. You can work with generic suppliers. These are suppliers like Sagebrook Home. They make a lot of their own items and they sell them wholesale, but you've probably never heard of them and they just make basically generic products. Then you have name brand suppliers. That's kind of self-explanatory. These are products like Hasbro, Mattel, Nerf, Marvel, Nike, all of the large name brand stuff that a lot of consumers will recognize. So in this video, I wanna go over the best ways to find suppliers that drop ship. These are going to be my personal research methods that I use in my business. The first one is going to be how to do it on Google. And the next one is going to be how to do it through Amazon. Now, the way that you do it on Google is that you're going to search your specific market, your specific niche, and then you're going to also put the word wholesale and you're also going to either put distributor. And after both of those keywords, you're then going to put the word dropship. So for example, if I was doing home decor, I would basically type in Google home decor, dropship, wholesale suppliers. So let's say for example, I wanted to find fishing supplies. This is obviously a random example, but this can work for any single market that you're in. If you want to do automotive, if you want to do business to business and you want to sell some hardware or you want to sell some electronics, or maybe you want to sell like air conditioning units, or you want to sell home decor products, any single market that you want to work with, you can always type it in Google and Google is by far the best way to find suppliers. So let's say that I wanted to find suppliers for fishing supplies. What I would do is I would type in fishing supplies, wholesale distributors. And then if you honestly just wanted to find drop shipping ones, what you could do is you could actually just put in the word drop shippers. And this is not going to get you the best results because a lot of wholesalers don't actually drop ship, but this does narrow down the search and it is a quicker way to find wholesale suppliers that drop ship. Now, when it comes to name brand suppliers, if you specifically just want to work with companies that carry name brand products like Disney or anything like that, the process is relatively the same. You would basically just go on Google and you would type in that brand. And also I do have another video on my channel that goes full in depth on how to find suppliers 
for name brand products. So I'm going to link it right on top. So currently I have some tabs open in Google and I'm gonna show you all of the different results and I'm gonna show you all the different keywords and how you can phrase it to basically just find the best drop shipping suppliers for whatever market or category that you're looking for. So for the example that we used before, we had fishing supplies and we typed in wholesale distributors, drop shippers. Now, again, it doesn't sound or it doesn't roll off the tongue, but you can basically just type it any way you wanted. So what I could say is I could say wholesale fishing suppliers, drop shipping, or I can type in drop shipping, wholesale suppliers, fishing supplies. As long as you have those words in your search, then basically it's going to bring up the exact results. Again, if I wanted to find home decor, I could then type in home decor, wholesale drop ship. This is going to bring up again, results for wholesalers that drop ship. Now you could basically word it any way that you want, but I like to put the category first, then wholesale and then drop ship. And just to show you the third example, I typed in automotive wholesale drop shipping suppliers. So the next step is you wanna weed through all of the results just to get the best suppliers and you wanna curate everything to make sure that you're finding the best suppliers that you can work with. Now this is not an exact science, but basically the more that you do it and the more that you practice with it, the better that you are going to get. So let's go back to our results on Google. And currently we have fishing supplies, wholesale distributors, drop shippers. Again, it doesn't roll off the tongue, but it doesn't need to. It has all of the necessary keywords. Now I'm gonna scroll down and I'm gonna start actually looking at the results. I'm gonna start reading the metadata. I'm going to start reading the header. And I'm also gonna read the business website name. And this is going to give me some context or it's gonna give me some information. And once I see some flags or once I see some things that are going to let me know that they are a wholesale drop shipper, then what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to click them and I'm gonna open them in another tab. So let's scan through all of the results. Currently we have Amazon Business. Now we wanna sell on Amazon, so this is obviously probably not going to be a good supplier. The next one is we have Inventory Source. Now I already know what that is, but if you don't know what that is, what you would do is you would research it or you would actually read it. So it says dropship hunting and fishing gear from wholesale dropshippers. It says 8 million products, 230 suppliers. So right there, this shows you that this is not a supplier itself. They said that they have 230 suppliers, meaning that they are basically just a software or they are a catalog of other suppliers. Now that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for actual wholesale companies to work with. So if you continue to scroll down, you have Krav. Again, if you actually read this, it says they are basically they're a website or they just are not an actual wholesale distributor. So you gotta keep scrolling. Again, we have inventory source again. We have inventory source again. Then we have China brands. And now we're actually starting to get some really good results. So the next few results on Google do look promising. So if you look at this supplier, it says that we can supply fishing gear without brand label for special orders for wholesalers and drop shippers. So this leads me to believe that maybe they are a drop shipping or they are a wholesaler that sells fishing supplies. So what I would do is I'm just going to click open link in new tab. Now I'm going to continuously do that for all of the different wholesalers that I find. What I wanna do is if they actually look promising, I'm going to open them up in another tab. After I have every single supplier from the page opened in another tab, I'm then going to start going through their websites and curating the list to find out which ones I actually wanna contact and which ones I can potentially start working with. So let's continue the tutorial and currently we have Birch Fishing Tackle. It says that since 1947, Birch Fishing Tackle Inc. has been providing fishing tackle supplies and outdoors geared to uh, retailers, to dealers, with over 1,500 active products, drop shipping is available. So this looks like a promising result. So we're just gonna open it in another tab. Community and Shopify, so this is actually not going to be a supplier. Then we have Quora, that's not a supplier. Wholesale Central, now if you don't know what that is, Wholesale Central is basically sort of like a Google or it's a search engine to find wholesalers. So they are not a wholesaler themselves, so I'm going to skip that link. Then we have this site right here. So the 13 best fishing suppliers and distributors. Again, they're not a wholesaler, nor are they a distributor. They are just a linking website or they're just a blog. So I'm gonna skip that. Then we have Perry's Tackle Wholesale Distributor. So this is a Canadian distributor of wholesale fishing, tackle fishing uh, lures, rods, and heels. Looks promising. I'm just going to open it in another tab. And I'm basically going to continue this process for every single potential supplier that I find on Google. So once you pull up a wholesale website, you then just wanna do a little bit of research and you actually wanna look at the site to make sure that they are a legitimate supplier, that they are a legitimate wholesaler, that they are going to be able to drop ship and that they are going to be a good fit for your business. Now, these are some questions that I normally ask. These are some questions that I normally look for. So the first thing that I always look for is how does the website look? The next thing is, is there a contact button or a phone number? just so I can contact them and ask them, do they supply to retailers? Will they let me sell on Amazon? Some things like that. 
Then you also just want to view them on Google Maps. This is so that if you actually see their location, you can see their warehouse and make sure that they are legit. The next thing is I just Google them. This way I can go ahead and just see if they have any reviews on Google or if they have any reviews on Yelp and if anyone has anything bad to say about the company. So after that, I might go ahead and I might check their products on Amazon. How are the reviews? How are the listings? Are they actually looking good? Do the products sell well? Stuff like that. And also, whenever you're on a wholesale website, you always want to make sure that you can either see something that says contact them or that you see something that says register to shop or anything that might say wholesale. If it says wholesale anywhere on the bottom or on the top, that is going to be a good indicator that they do work with retailers. Other than that, if you do see something to apply, you want to click on it. And after that, it's going to bring you up to the application process. So for this, I'm using CTW Home Collection as an example. They are a wholesaler and they do dropship. They're also pretty easy to get approved with, but they serve as a good example just because they actually have a good website and it also allows me to show you what you should look for. So if on a website you see something that says that they sell their products wholesale only, or you see something that says register to shop, then that's a pretty good indicator that they are a wholesaler. So once you click register to shop, it's going to bring you up to this page and then you can actually apply for a new account. So after that, it's going to bring you up to the application process and we will address this later on in the video. But what I wanna show you is that most legitimate wholesalers, such as CTW, they will ask you to provide your state sales tax ID or your reseller's permit or something that's going to show exemption certificate from sales tax. So if you scroll down, you'll see that they actually want you to put in your business information, they wanna put you in your address, they want you to put in your business credentials, and after that, they actually want you to put in your certificate number and your sales tax ID. So this is a really good flag or this is a really good indicator that they are a legitimate wholesaler. So now let's analyze some of the sites that we opened up from our Google search and we're going to see if their results actually gave us any good wholesalers. So what I always do is when I first come to a website, I always make sure that I scroll to the bottom and I always make sure that they have some promising links. What I mean by this is we wanna look for anything that says wholesaler, we wanna look for anything that says wholesale login, application, anything that's going to hint to us that they are actually a wholesaler or a manufacturer that sells to retailers. So when you're at the footer of their website, what I always do is I just make sure that I can actually contact them. So I'm going to click the contact us, I'm going to open it up in another page, and I just wanna see if they actually have an email or a phone number. Now typically I will call them, this just lets me vet them out or lets me actually see that they are a real company. Now for the sake of this tutorial, I'm not going to call them, but that's typically what I'll do, or you can actually just send them an email or a message. So they do have a contact us button, they also have a blog, a video. Next thing I will also open up the about us and I'll just quickly see what they say about their company. So their company profile and they also have a couple of things about it. They have their brand, they have their company performance and again it does seem like they have a decent amount of information. Now the next step is again we just want to look for some information that allows us to apply as a wholesaler or gives us a way that we can start working with them. So we have customer support, shipping and payments, return policy. Uh, this is probably just for the retailers or any customers shopping from their website. Next, you can click frequently asked questions. And also you'll see right here under other info, we have drop shipping. So that's kind of what we're looking for. So that's what we're going to click. So once you click on the drop shipping link, it's going to bring you to this. Now this is where we conduct and this is where we begin our thorough research of the company to make sure that they are a legit wholesaler. The process doesn't really take that long. You're just looking for a few red flags that are either going to hint that they are not a wholesaler or a few things that are going to hint that they are a wholesaler. And the last step is, is that you're not really going to know that they're a wholesaler until you can apply with them or until you actually can contact them and that you can actually vet them out. So what I did for this website is I couldn't find a link that said wholesale or anything to start working with them. So I found a link that said drop shipping. So that's what I clicked and that's what I have. Now it says basically that in order to start working with them, that I'm going to need to actually email right here for wholesale or business customers, that, they're, that they have a lot of advantages to working with their company, so on and so forth. But again, we're not going to know any of that until we actually start working with them. So while I'm doing that or after I had contact them, what I would do is then I would continue to vet out the website. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to look at their shipping times, I'm going to look at all of their other policies, and I'm going to try and find a lot of other things that are going to show me that they are a good company. So when drop shipping, shipping times are really important. So if you see a link that says shipping times or that says other policies, this is what we wanna click on. We wanna click on the shipping and payments. We wanna also check out the returns 
And we also want to check out the frequently asked questions. So once you open up the shipping tab, this is the page that it's going to bring you up to. This is where they are going to detail all of their shipping methods that they use, all of the shipping times, and also the payments. So we see right here that they use USPS, FedEx. This one right here might be something that's a red flag just because ePacket is from China. So I want to make sure that this company is not drop shipping from China and then sending it to my customers. I want to work with authentic and real US wholesale suppliers. So then we have to check out the shipping times, three to eight days, otherwise shipping takes one to two weeks. So that's another flag that might say that they're shipping actually from China. They also ship worldwide, which is good. Just a couple of other things, they take credit card. So this is honestly leading me to believe that they are from China, but I'm going to continue my research. The next thing that I do after I've basically seen their return policy, I've seen the shipping, I've tried to look for their drop shipping or for their wholesale program, is I am now going to basically search them on Google and I wanna search up their name and I also wanna search up the company location to see their warehouse or their base of operations. So the first thing that I'll do is I will take the brand name and I will put it into a Google search and then I will see what results come up. So we have an ad for their website, then we have their retail website, then we have a bunch of customers on YouTube and other websites trying out their products. This is all really good. It does allow me to believe that they are a pretty big brand, that their products are very good and that customers like it. Other things that I see is that they sell on Amazon. So that's not definitely a red flag because we also want to sell their products on Amazon. But what we're going to do is we're going to open this up and I want to see if other retailers are selling their products on Amazon or if the brand is selling it themselves. So when you click on the link to go to their page on Amazon, this is their brand store on Amazon and it looks like they have a lot of items, but immediately I'll notice that a lot of these items are prime, which means that someone is sending it to the FBA warehouse and that it's not being drop shipped. And if you click on the listing, this is going to show you that it's being sold by the brand itself. So this would not be a good brand to contact. Maybe if you wanted to Shopify drop ship this or you wanted to drop ship it on your own website, maybe eBay, then you would be able to contact the company and start working with them there. And you'll even see right here, it says, this is the exclusive authorizee to sell this patent line spooler in the US market. So we would not be able to sell these on Amazon. So what I would do is I would just basically delete all this and I would move on to the next supplier. Now the next step is I would just do the same process for all of the other websites that I found from my Google search. So I would go to this one right here. I would go to the contact us. I would go to the about us. Right here, you'll see something that says become a dealer. So I would click that and that should give me some information about how I can start working with them. And it doesn't actually pop up. So here now we have the application. So what I would do is I would just fill this in or I could contact them and ask them some questions before I actually start working with them. And again, on their website, we wanna look for something that says drop shipping. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna scroll down and we see shipping, inventory source, so again, let's just click the frequently asked questions and we just wanna see if they actually do dropship. So is there a way to dropship with my account? So it says that they have an excellent dropship program. So again, this could be another potential supplier and I would basically just follow the same steps and I would look for anything that says dropship. I would look for anything that is going to hint that this supplier is a wholesaler and that I can start working with them. Now the process is literally the same exact process for any category that you are searching in. If you are searching in home decor, in automotive, whatever it is that you're searching in, what you wanna do is you just wanna go through Google, find the good results, go through them after you open them up in a new tab, and then you wanna go ahead and curate them to find the best results, put them in a spreadsheet, and then later you can see which ones you're going to start working with. So the next research method that I'm going to show you to find suppliers is I'm going to show you how to find them on Amazon. What you wanna do is you wanna follow the same process, you wanna go ahead and you wanna look on Google, once you find a supplier that you think that is going to be good, or once you find a supplier that you know that you're going to start working with, what you wanna do is you wanna to go to their website, you wanna actually get their brand name. So this one right here is CTW Home Collection. They are a home decor supplier that does dropship. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go to Amazon, and since I know that this company dropships, and I also know that they let other sellers sell their products on Amazon, I wanna find all of my competitors, and I wanna find all the other competitors or brands that are selling the products on Amazon and I wanna find out what other companies, what other wholesale products they are selling. Then I wanna find those wholesale products, I wanna reverse search it and I wanna find the company. Then I'm going to start working with that company as well. So what I would do is I would just click on see the new sellers. So I'm going to click on new and I'm going to find all the different sellers. Here we have one that's being sold prime, but again, we do know that the seller does drop ship. So we're going to try and find all of the different products that this seller has. So I'm going to click on their name and then I'm going to go to their storefront. 
on Amazon and I'm going to see all of their different products that they currently sell. So what I would do is I would just basically scan through all of their different products and I would click on all of the different ones. So let's say I wanted to start selling this. I would open this up in a new tab. Let's say I just wanted to start selling this. I'm just doing this at random, but you can do this for any product that they have. And what you can either do is you can search Google for the brand or you can actually search Google for the product name. So for this paper towel right here, what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to search up Umbra and I'm going to search Google for this and then we'll see what pops up. So here we have the actual website. So I'm going to click it and then I wanna see if I could register as a wholesaler with this brand. So once I have the website open, you then just wanna follow the same process of scanning the website, looking if you can start working with them, looking if they are a wholesaler that will actually work with retailers and allow you to drop ship. Now I would actually do the same process for all of the items that my competitor has. So now I started working with Umbra, so I'm going to now avoid all of those products. The next one that we have here is Tablecraft. I would do the same process. I would open this up in Google and I would try and find their website, find if I could start working with them. And this is by far one of the best ways to find new suppliers to start working with. Once you have your wholesalers that you wanna start working with, the next step is that you actually wanna to register to create an account with them this way you can place orders, this way you can actually have the items sent out to your customers and that you can start working with them to sell their items on Amazon. So I'm going to be showing you a couple of examples of how you can actually create an account or how you can actually go ahead and apply on these wholesale websites. So once you find the suppliers, then the next step is you're going to start creating an account. This way you can start placing orders and start selling their products. So the first step is that you're going to go to their site and you're either going to see something that says create an account wholesale application or register with our business, something like that. Once you see one of those terms or once you see a link that sounds similar to that, you're going to click it and then it's going to bring you up to the application. You're going to fill it out, put in all the information and then they'll either contact you with anything that they need or they'll actually approve your wholesale account right away. Some suppliers won't actually have the application on their website and you'll need to download it, fill it out, and then send it back in a PDF. That's not as common, but it does happen. The last way is, is that you won't see any application or anything on the website. And what you'll need to do is you'll just need to contact them and you'll need to ask for if you can start working with them or any of the information. And then they'll send that over and then you can start working with them. So just to give you an idea of the application process as well as what information is needed, I'm going to show you CTW very quickly. If you were to go on their website, again, what you would do is you would look for anything that says register to shop, create an account, apply for an account, wholesale registration, something like that. So right here, I'm going to click register to shop. And then it gives me two options. So I am a new account. So I'm going to click create new account. And right here, you'll see that they are going to ask you for a bunch of different information. They're going to want your name, your address, your business name, your country, your city, all of that information about you. They're going to want your email address, confirm it. You don't actually need to give your website, but if you do have one, it's going to help you out. So the next step is pretty standard when working with wholesalers. This is the step that we addressed in the beginning of the video. Once you have your resale certificate, you're going to have your certificate number. What you're gonna do is you're going to put that right here. You're then going to select your state that it's from. You're then going to go ahead and you're going to apply for CTW. And that's basically the entire application process for how to start working with this particular wholesaler. For another example, we can use the brand that we had found from our competitor on Amazon. If we wanted to start working with them, we would go ahead and we would click something that says apply or anything that says register now or wholesale or something like that. So I clicked wholesale and trade and it brought me up to this page. So it says right here, apply new accounts for design professionals. That doesn't sound like what I'm trying to apply for. So then it gives me another option. So you can apply to the trade program for interior design. So this doesn't really sound like anything that I'm looking for. So what I would do is I would actually just contact them and I would basically send them this message and this will be in the description. But what it basically says is hello. And if you know the name, you could put it then my name, my company name, and I am interested in opening a wholesale account with you. Please let me know the information that you need from me and I will be sure to send it over. I have my resale certificate on hand if needed. Thank you. Then you're gonna put your name, your company name, and also your website if you have it. So once the brand gets that email, they're then going to email you back with all the information that they need, or they are going to send you a link or any instructions for how to create an account with them, or they might just flat out tell you that they don't wanna accept any new retailers, this is just the overall process for how to start working with different wholesalers. So now let's talk about how you can actually find items to sell or how can you find all of your suppliers listings. So typically your supplier is either going to have a UPC code or that item is going to have a specific SKU or you might even be able to search by the name. But what you wanna do is you wanna to go to the back end of Amazon and you wanna find a SKU for a specific product. 
So once you have a wholesale account and once you're logged in, you should be able to see all the different prices for the items that you'll pay. Now this one is currently out of stock, but if I did want to order it, I would pay $10 for the wholesale price. So what I'm going to do is this item does come with a UPC code. So I'm just going to copy and paste it into the Amazon search results, and then it's going to bring up that listing. So once it brings up that listing, I will be able to see the sales rank. I'm going to see if the actual item sells. And once I have all of that information, I can decide whether or not to list it. So what I want to do is I just want to see the product details. And since I have Jungle Scout, I can go ahead and I can run Jungle Scout just to see how many sales this is actually getting. So Jungle Scout is going to tell me that this listing is getting 1,529 sales a month for a total monthly revenue of $32,033, which is not bad. But again, you also have to take into account that this is mainly a FBA listing. So I probably can't compete on this if I'm drop shipping, but this is just the overall way that I go ahead and I take the UPC code and I find the item on Amazon and then I'll just quickly see how well it's selling. The next option that you can use to find items on Amazon is you can actually use a price sheet scanner. Now, not every supplier is going to have a price sheet. Not every supplier is going to have a UPC code, but for the ones that do, this makes the process completely a lot faster and honestly a lot easier. So what CTW has is they have a price sheet scanner. So if you go to your account, you can actually get a list of all the products with the UPC codes. So you'll see right here that if I click price list, this should give me all of the different things, all the different quantities, the price. And what you could do is you can actually download this. And since this has the UPC code and all these UPC codes are linked to listings on Amazon, you can go to a price sheet scanner. I personally use Scan Unlimited. You would just do new scan. You would upload your price sheet. It would take the UPC code, match it with the one on Amazon, and it would find all the different listings. So I already scanned it and I'm gonna show you all of the different results and I'm gonna show you how it works. Now, just to give you a quick overview, what it does is it basically brings up every single listing and it shows you how much money you will make based off the price from the actual price sheet that the company is charging you. So you'll see that some of these listings are not profitable, so I would stay away from those, but all of the listings that I'm basically profitable on or all of the ones that I, I am going to make a profit on, first I'm going to sort it. So I wanna find the ones that I'm going to have the highest, highest ROI or the ones that I'm actually going to make a profit on. And then what I could do is I could actually go ahead and I could run Jungle Scout on it. And I don't even have to run Jungle Scout because since we're drop shipping, we're not actually buying in bulk. I could just list it anyways, even if I don't get a sale, because I'm not buying inventory, I'm not wasting any money. So what I would do is I'm just going to find the ones that are going to make me the most money. So again, I'm just going to sort it again, find the ones that have some decent ROI, and you can also put in some specifications here. Like you don't want anything lower than a 50% ROI or something like that. And what I'm going to do is if you click on the name right here in uh, Scan Unlimited, it's going to bring you up the listing on Amazon. So right here we found the item. Now what I'm going to do is I would just scroll down. And once I have the listing, I could then click sell on Amazon and I could put my offer on the listing. So right here you'll see that it doesn't actually say it. So a little trick that you can use is you could take the ASIN you can go to the back end and you can put it right here. Press search. Once you press search, list, listing limitations, and then you're going to click sell yours. And then that's a way that you can go ahead and list this item on Amazon. Now this makes the process a lot easier because this cuts down the time of when you could do 100 listings in an hour and now you could do 2000 in an hour because once you scan the price sheet, you can just sort which ones are going to be profitable. So here it actually gives me the 380% ROI, but it doesn't actually show that they have any sales rank. So I could actually sort this. Let's say I don't want anything lower than 50. So I don't want to see anything. I want to see everything greater than, and then I could put 50%. Or I could also put anything else. I could say that I want everything with a sales rank of 100,000 or lower. I could put all of the different specifications for the sheet. And then I can instantly go ahead and find that listing by clicking on the name. I could also find out the sales rank. I could find out how many sellers. So um, some more information that you could find is if you click right here, it'll give you all the information for that listing. So it'll pull up the sales chart. It'll pull up how many sellers are on the listing, all of that information. So it saves you time from going and clicking into the actual listing. And then you don't have to scroll down and you don't have to go back to your supplier's website, get the UPC code, and then you don't also don't have to go back right to 
Amazon. So this basically saves you a lot of time, makes the process a lot of easier. And this is definitely a software that you should try. Again, they do offer a free trial. You can scan up to one sheet every month for free. I am not an affiliate for it. I just think that it's a really good software. So just some quick notes that I want to go over when trying to find items to list on. It's sales rank is irrelevant when you're drop shipping because we're not actually paying any money for inventory. So if we go ahead and we list on an item that's 13 million, it doesn't matter if we sell it in 13 years from now because we are basically not putting any money up front. So it doesn't cost us anything to go ahead and list it. Just make sure that you are profitable. Now, my number is I try and look for at least, at least for a minimum, a 15% ROI. This means that if it's going to be $100, I will try and make $15 on that listing. This means that it's going to be worth your time. You don't want to go ahead and sit there and do all this work making $1 on an item. Other things that I check for on the listing are I just check if I'm gated. If I'm gated for the category or for the specific brand, then I can't list it. Also, you want to check for reviews. Just make sure that the item is good and that the brand actually does have good reviews. So you'll see this one right here has 4.7 out of 5. So this is actually a good product. And these are just a couple of other things to look out for. You also want to look out for how many sellers are on it. It doesn't really matter if Amazon is on it or it doesn't actually matter how many sellers because we are drop shipping and we're not buying in bulk. The reason that you just want to see how many sellers are on the listing is if it actually has a lot less sellers, let's say there are only one or two, this way you can undercut them and you can know that it's a good listing to get on. But if it has 20 sellers, it might not be worth it and you might not be able to get a sale. So once you have found the items that you're going to be profitable on and the items that are worth listing, what you want to do is you either want to go to the scan unlimited or you're going to go to the actual listing. And what you're going to do is if you're on scan unlimited, you're going to click the listing it's going to bring up the exact listing on Amazon. And let's say that you found it from doing a regular search on Amazon. What you want to do is you're either going to click sell on Amazon right here. So if you scroll down to, uh, to the bottom, you're going to see something that says other sellers on Amazon and it's going to say sell on Amazon. This is going to bring you up to the listing page. If you do not see that, what you're going to do is you're going to scroll down. You're going to get right here till you see the ASIN. So once you get the ASIN, you're going to take that, copy and paste it, and you're going to go to your listing page on Amazon and then you're going to put in your ASIN right here. And then that is going to also bring up the same listing. Now, once you bring up that listing in order to list it on Amazon, first off, you want to make sure that you're not gated. After that, you're going to click listing limitations apply. Then you're going to click sell yours and then it's going to bring you up to the listing page. Once you're on the listing page, the next step is you just want to put in all of your information for your listing. So item condition should be new. Quantity, it's basically going to go based off of what your supplier has. So typically if it has 25 or if it has 30, I'll put 10 just to be safe. The next step is you just want to put in your price. So I'm going to match the little price because I want the buy box. And then you also want to go to your advanced view. And then from there in your handling time, this is going to depend on what your air supplier has. If your supplier ships out within one to two days, you could put, or you just could leave it blank and Amazon will automatically put two days. If your supplier takes three or four days, then you could just go ahead and put whatever you need. So I'm going to put in three days just to be on the safe side. Remember, Amazon metrics are really important. So you wanna make sure that the item is not going to be late. So you, it's better to be safe than sorry. So that's why I'm putting three. The next thing that you also just wanna do before you close out is you just wanna put your shipping template. I showed this in my previous video, how you can set up different shipping templates for your different suppliers. So you wanna set up the right one for your supplier. After that, you're just going to click save and finish. And that's how you list and listing on Amazon. So really quick, just to talk about how you actually pay suppliers, most suppliers will accept Amex, they will accept Discover, they will accept Visa and MasterCard. So I usually always pay my suppliers through credit cards. This is also a way that I do get some extra profit because I do get cash back on my credit cards. So usually I'll use a credit card that has 2%. So this way I can get a little bit extra profit on the order. Some suppliers I do pay through PayPal, but most of my suppliers, especially ones that you're using the method through Google to find, if you're purchasing it through their website, they will always, always, always mostly accept credit card. Now, the way that it usually works when you're placing an order on a wholesale website is that you're usually just going to click add to cart. You'd put the quantity. After that, you're just going to go to your cart. You're going to go to checkout. Sometimes you might have to go ahead and you might have to add another step just if it's a drop ship order. Different websites are going to have different ways of doing that. Once you do that, you're going to put in the customer's information. 
You're then going to put in any specific instructions, whether or not you want to use your own shipping account, whether or not you want them to ship out using their own label, whether or not you want to provide a label from Amazon. So anything like that, after that, you're just going to put in your payment information and then you are going to basically order it. After two to three days, depending on the supplier, they will email you a tracking number. Some of them will automatically go ahead and they'll email you. Sometimes you might have to go ahead and they might send it to you in batch numbers. It really depends on the supplier, but that is usually the order process when it comes to wholesale suppliers. What I'm gonna show you is how you can actually take the tracking number from your supplier and how you're going to put it in in order to fulfill the order on Amazon. So when you're on Amazon, you wanna to go to your orders tab. Then when you see the orders, you wanna to go to, and you wanna click confirm shipment. After that, it's going to bring you up to this page. What you're gonna do is you're gonna scroll down to the part where you see confirm shipment. You're then going to select the date. You're going to select the carrier that your supplier is using. So let's say they're using UPS or USPS. And then you're going to put in the tracking ID right here. You do not need to fill in the tracking service. After that, you are going to click confirm shipment. And that's going to be it. Amazon is going to take care of the rest. And that's basically how you upload the tracking to Amazon. So that's the entire process for how to drop ship on Amazon, how to get an account, how to get a resale certificate, how to find suppliers, how to go ahead and verify those suppliers, how to find profitable items, and then how to list those items on Amazon, and then how to fulfill orders. I hope that you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I know it was a long video. I tried to condense everything as much as I can and try to make it as straightforward as I can, but I really wanted to make this video as in-depth and as step-by-step -step as possible. If you have not already subscribed to the channel, be sure to do so. I'm going to be coming out with a lot more tutorials, so you don't want to miss those. Also, if you did enjoy the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. I know that's all I can ask. I'm not selling a course. I don't have any affiliate links in the description. All I'm asking is if you did enjoy the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. That's the equivalent of paying like $2,000 for my course. So I hope that you guys enjoy this free video. If you did, also be sure to leave in the comments what types of videos that you would also like to see. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.